Welcome back to another video on medical physics. Specifically today we want to talk about if in part three or general studies you see a graph like this where we have our false positives on the x-axis, true positives on our y-axis. We can also look at our true negatives here and our true positives if you get a graph that looks like this. This would be considered our deci decision threshold. And so you may be asked what exactly are these? How do they pertain to a clinic? And so uh, specifically these are just ROC curves as they call them or receiver operating characteristic curves. And it assesses the usefulness of a certain test to detect something. So for example, uh, for medical physics, a big thing this would be used for is cancer. So we'd be finding the usefulness of a certain test for detecting <laughs> the cancer. So uh, the first question maybe that would be asked, so there are a lot of criteria for these certain things and uh, the first would be sensitivity. So if they ask you to find the sensitivity uh, or maybe how would you find a, a false positive or specificity, that's another one they often look at in these type of tests. Uh, we also have just simply our accuracy. And so we can go through these. Uh, so the sensitivity is the true positive fraction. That means that we are calling something positive when in fact it is positive. And that is equal to the number of true positives over true positives plus false negatives. So they may give you uh, in a written test an example of they are detecting cancer and they're gonna give you an actual number for true positives, false negatives, uh, and all the rest of these. And you're actually just gonna have to plug in numbers. So very well may be like 100 over 100 plus 50. You get a certain number and a percentage and that's your sensitivity. Next, we want our false positive fraction, and that is calling something positive, saying, okay, there is cancer when really there isn't. So that is equal to our number of false positives over our false positives plus our true negatives. Next, we have our specificity. That is calling something normal when it actually is. Uh, that is our true negative over our true negative plus false positive. It's nice that as you can see a correlation, it's the first term on top and then it's the same term on the bottom plus the opposite thus far for all of these, which it makes it a lot easier to, to memorize these if it's uh, needed. So the accuracy is just calling something what it truly is and this, all you have to remember is that uh, true positive and false negative need to go on top and then we have everything on the bottom. So all of our options there. So in case you're questioned on a written exam how to actually calculate these or on part three or an oral exam, you may just be asked what do these mean? and especially for an oral exam, they may show you a graph like this. What does this actually mean? It's great that you, you remember all these and great and you know to plug in numbers, but what does it actually mean? And that can often be missed in a textbook. So if we look at this graph right here in the bottom, and they would say, here is your graph of the test, here is your ROC curve, how would you assess the results of this curve? What does this mean? So if the curve bends towards the upper left corner, then the better the test is. The say, Let's consider this linear line, this line right here, just perfectly linear. That's saying that essentially you have a 50-50 guess on getting it right or wrong. And then as it curves up, you're getting more true positives, which again makes sense. This is 100%, meaning that if uh, 
obviously your point or at 100% right here. That means you would be 100% of the time knowing that this test is detecting cancer. Uh, and so ultimately when you're using this, that's what you want in your ROC curves for your specific test and finding its usefulness. How far up and to the left does it go? Obviously down and to the right is a worse test, something that isn't as useful. And you have to base the decisions of these tests on the balances between false positives and true positives. So that is a brief introduction into ROC curves. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please comment below and look forward to more videos on medical physics or part three preparation.